so my story with the Big Chair Chess Club is different and I guess anyone else's story is supposed to be different and for me I have been playing chess for a little bit over a year and I have to say the first thing to know about chess and with having a mentor like Eugene Brown is that it's not about the person you're playing across the table from you no because we're all seated at the same table it's about a development of self and pushing each other further and instantly he would always say regime stop touching all the pieces on the table and I realized that you know acting from a place of emotion like just reacting sometimes you get into complex situations and try to figure out how you got there but if you don't think it thoroughly and all the way through you'll start to feel boxed in but you have to open your mind up and for me coming from Winston-Salem North Carolina my name is Regine and I am 23 years old <clears throat> I come from a city where everyone, it's a small city, but everyone wants to make it out. And the question would be to make it out from what? And every city has its ups and downs. And Winston-Salem is known for its creative arts. The tobacco factory is probably the biggest thing that's going to pop out to you, as well as bus companies. You know, it used to be like a running engine for the city, RJR Tobacco Company. But underneath all of that of what a city is known for, we the people make the city what it is. And you know, with the ups and downs, you have health issues, crime rates, you can't go everywhere that you wanna go because you know, things happen. Things happen and you can't always, um, when you have a different mindset, you can't really plan for a certain situations like tragedy violence in your city and stuff like that you can't prevent it but you can think thoroughly before that situation comes you know and for me I always felt the pressure of what everybody was feeling around me so I wanted to change that situation for myself and my community and they would say young people don't read all they do is you know they just don't read they just stay on electronics the internet they're in the streets or what have you today i can disagree with that and say that young people do read however with that notion that young people don't read i started writing every day like screenplays that turn out to be poetry and instead of just leaving my thoughts and emotions on the page, I took my first step of action and I drove to Hickory, North Carolina where I met Eugene Brown. And from then on, I started playing chess. And, you know, we started talking about the different pieces about what's the most powerful one. And I realized I was just moving pieces and realizing what each piece was worth almost subconsciously without thinking I automatically went to a certain direction and he's like why'd you make that move and I was like I don't know I just moved it and a lot of people they just go to what they think is normal but they don't know they have other options and other solutions to choose from so I was introduced to more options and I was able to reveal to myself what was in my subconscious mind of going to automatically a certain route or a certain diagonal on the board or a certain square and in real life I would automatically go to work doing a nine to five and having the same conversations over and over but when I started communicating more with people when I started going to more open mic events because I stopped going to open mics but you know after I met Eugene Brown I started going back to open mic events and he would support me there and he would say you know speak up speak up and I used to be afraid of it like my voice would get all shaky and stuff and I realized now I like it I like getting up on stage yes it's scary at first but I like it I can't wait to go back I like the butterflies I like that you know having your voice heard and telling your story 
And I believe your story can begin in chess once you start expanding and opening your mind. The most up peak moment was like going to different libraries around Winston and, and Clemens. And there was a five year old who was playing chess blindfolded. A five year old playing chess blindfolded. That moment right there told me anybody could play chess because kids, their minds are quick and sharp, but they can hold that memory once it's empowered with logic and starting to think more critically and advance in the future. And like I was saying, I was used to the paradigm of having the same conversations and working a nine to five and planning my life around a two week schedule. But, you know, some people don't plan their future years on end. Anyway, not years on end, probably just for the moment, but you can start changing your life around you and creating what you want to have. So I think that with chess, you can empower your mind and have that stability of a big brother and big sister or whomever to help guide you with your plans and you can come up with different strategies and you know, don't don't be like when I first started acting out emotions and get into complex situations because now I have that time where I can relax and think through instead of making quick, rapid decisions without seeing it in my mind first of how it's going to play out. And I have a six-year-old brother and we play chess all the time. He likes it and we'll be playing chess on the board and I'll make a move and then he'll make a move and then I'll try to set him up and on his end he'll be like no regime I'm not gonna make that move I know what you're trying to do so like, it's a fun game for anybody to play and I think that well I know that <laughs> I know that young people will like the game it's different and it gets their mind thinking you know they have high energy and they like to be challenged so you can challenge them with their own thoughts and creativity to trying out solutions and figuring out what happens after they make a certain move because kids like to figure out what happens on the other side when people are saying don't do this don't do that you know but they can try it out on a game board and figure out what happens and they can do it and grow with it in their lifetime <clears throat> I know that chess will stick around forever because it's been around since early centuries of AD, of India, Morocco, Persia, Europe. You know, it's been around for centuries and I believe it's gonna continue to be around because we make these decisions every day. You know, we think every day. And what's critical is when I first started playing, I didn't know that I wasn't really thinking, I was just acting and doing without really much planning in mind. Like looking at a chessboard, you're looking at something, but if you don't know the rules or the game, you know, you'll get beat every time. But while you're looking at it, you'll really know if you're thinking or if you're not thinking and making the same patterns over and over. And you can also use it as a guidance tool. Like, okay, if this doesn't work, I can do this next. So that's my thoughts on the Big Chair Chess Club and think before you move. <clears throat> you know, I have much clarity in mind now. Different life situations, I'm able to think, I'm able <clears throat> to sit myself down and really think about what I'm doing and put myself out there. So I thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day, and tune in to more of the Think Before You Move movement, because it's a village mentality.